Hey, I'm Kyle from Servo City, and today we're going to be talking about X-Rail. In previous videos, we've talked about how to use X-Rail as an axle, as it fits through a one-inch bearing. We've talked about the slides and the nuts that fit inside of there, so you can put plates and channel on the X-Rail. Uh, we've talked about the pattern on the end, but what we haven't covered yet is how to modify your X-Rail. There are many features that make this easily modifiable. Um, it has drill guides, so you can easily drill it from the side. Uh, the ends are extruded with holes in it, so you can tap it to 632 very easily, and you can also cut this quite easily. For starters, we're going to cut our X-Rail. Today I brought in a cold cut saw. Um, this is a saw that we just picked up off Amazon to set up our, our little makeshift workshop. And uh, I've put a fruit blade on this. It's a non-ferrous cutting blade. Uh, you need to make sure that the blade is proper for the material that you're going to be cutting. Um, this is not just a regular miter saw, it actually runs at a lower RPM than a standard miter saw, so make sure you don't just go out and buy a, a non-ferrous cold cut saw blade and put it on your miter saw and try to use it that way. So uh, for starters, I'm going to slide the X-Rail up against the fence all the way. It's really important that you have it all the way up against there. Make sure you don't have any metal chips back behind there to where it will throw your, uh, your cut off. You want to get a nice and square edge. Um, now you'll notice this has a hold down that you just screw down on the material to hold the material in place. Um, the problem with this hold down is it's a little bit larger than the X-Rail is wide. So I'm going to grab a second piece of X-Rail and just slide it under the other side of the hold down in order to put even pressure on the two pieces and hold the piece that I'm cutting in place. So once that's screwed down and you have this set to the length you want to cut, uh, make sure you put on your safety glasses because aluminum flies everywhere using a saw like this and you're ready to cut. You can see that with the right blade it cuts very easily. It leaves two very clean ends so they're both very usable pieces. Um, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and um, tap this piece and screw up a, a plate or any Actobotics component to it. But we're going to move over and actually drill this uh, down through the, the side of the X-Rail in order to make a 90 degree joint this way. Uh, there are lots of different ways to make that 90 degree joint, but um, without any added components, we're just going to show you how to modify and put screws right through one piece into the tapped holes of another piece. Uh, now the first thing you'll notice is on the X-Rail there are actually some grooves down each side. Those grooves are on the 770 pattern, so it works really nicely as a drill guide. Um, now one of the, the biggest tips that I can give you today on modifying is uh, take your cold cut saw or whatever you're cutting the X-Rail with and cut a little sliver of X-Rail. This works excellently as a drill guide. Uh, you could just put that straight on top of your X-Rail wherever you want to drill and scribe that with a bit. Uh, I'll use a number 34 bit because the, the 0 0.110 inch bit is going to fit through the holes of the X-Rail. All you need to do to mark the location of the holes you're about to drill is put your drill guide on top of the X-Rail and clamp it down in a vise so that your guide doesn't move. Grab a number 34 bit and spin it inside of the drill guide holes. Number 34 bit is the proper size to fit through those through holes on your sliver of X-Rail. So we're just making a little mark on all four corners of that 770 pattern so that when you take it out of the vise, you know exactly where to drill. The next step in the process is going to be to go ahead and drill those four holes that you've marked on your X-Rail. Uh, I'm going to grab a, a vise to put the X-Rail into and we're just going to use the drill press to pop those holes through the sides. Um, I've chucked in a number 28 bit, which is a 0 0.1405, which is the proper size for a 632 screw to pass through so that when the screw passes through, it can thread right into the X-Rail on the bottom, which we're going to tap here in a little bit.
may have heard when I was drilling it, there are actually four stages that bit has to go through in, in the drilling process. So take your time when doing it. Uh, it's also a good idea to add a little bit of lubricant to the bit so that it cuts a little bit easier. And uh, with a little patience, you'll have four holes in the proper location so that you can mount this to another piece of X-Rail. Next in line, we're going to talk about tapping the end of the X-Rail. And as I mentioned previously, when this part gets extruded, it actually has the correct hole size to accept a 632 tap into the end. Um, and when you tap it, it gives you about 75% thread, which is common for an aluminum part. So uh, there are many different 632 taps. I tend to use a three flute tap so that all the material clears out very easily. Um, there are other taps that are more of a blunt end. There are two, two flute taps and all kinds of different ones. So just make sure that you get the proper one for the material you're going to be threading. Um, now, you can either use a tap handle, um, which that's great for doing a few holes. But if you, if you want to speed up your process, you can chuck it into a drill. And if you use a little bit of patience, it works really well that way. And you can get a lot more holes done and a lot faster. In order to tap this piece of X-Rail, I'm going to go ahead and put it in, in the vise to where I don't have to hold it by hand. And you'll notice that there, um, the jaws on the vise, there are two different sides on these. Uh, I happen to have the rough side sticking out, so it may mar the, the side of the X-Rail a little bit. Uh, if you really want to protect the side of the X-Rail, say if you're going to use V-wheels on the outside of it, or use it as a shaft at some point, you'd want to flip your jaws so that you have the smooth side out and so that it doesn't mar the outside. Um, so I've already chucked in my 632 three flute tap and uh, you really want to make sure that it's lubricated well and you want to be patient during this process so that your tap doesn't break inside of the hole. Uh, taps are of a very hard material um, but because they're so hard that means they don't flex at all so if they flex they're going to snap inside of the hole. Once again you want to use your eye protection You'll notice as I'm tapping, I actually spin the tap in several turns and then I'll back it out in order to clear the flutes out and remove that material that is removing from that hole. If the drill that you use has a clutch on it, you can actually set your clutch so that you don't put too much pressure on the tap and the clutch would kick in and spin to protect things, um, or you can also go by sound, and when it bogs down a little bit, you know it's time to back that out. Now that we've shown you how to cut, drill, and tap your X-Rail, you can easily make a joint like this one shown using 632 screws passing through the through holes and into the tapped holes that you've created. Now obviously we have a lot of off-the-shelf parts that would allow you to make the same kind of connection without modifying your X-Rail and drilling and tapping holes, but for those of you who like to get out in the shop and get your hands dirty, this would be a good, lightweight, and strong solution to make a 90-degree joint. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to email us at tech at servocity.com.